Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I've been busy at PAX, so I haven't been able to play much Hearthstone, so now is a good time to get back into it, I think. We've done a Shaman, we've done a Warlock, Paladin. I have had a chance to experiment a little bit with this in the arena. It's not bad, actually. N surprisingly, not too bad. There's a good amount of synergies available. There's a good amount of very safe cards that can be played in order to keep your minions alive just a little bit longer, as you might imagine. There's a couple of secrets that can throw spanners into the works here and there as well. Overall, it's a pretty good class from what I've seen. Its limitations appear to be based around its board clearing ability. Like, aside from Consecration, you don't really have a lot to take stuff off the board. So, if you end up in a situation where you're getting rushed down, you can be in a really ugly spot. There are a couple of cards, of course, that you can take from the neutral decks to fix that, but it can become problematic. What it's really good at is neutralizing big, stompy, dangerous creatures via a variety of things, including stuff like humility and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. So, let's grab a pally, shall we, and see where we go. And it starts off with a legendary. All right. I've always wanted to play Ysera deck because this actually has a, a separate side deck that I've never had to had a chance to see before, so I'm very tempted to bring out Ysera. The beast is really solid, especially if you can rush it out via the use of, say, a pint-sized summoner or something along those lines. Or, of course, random into it with a Alarma bot, which is a bit gimmicky. Illidan Storm Rage is okay. The problem I've got with Illidan is that if you... You've kind of got to wait till much later in the game to play him because his biggest strength is the ability to summon these Flames of Azanoth here. If you play it directly on like turn six, you're not going to have the mana to summon anything and a five health creature is not that difficult to eliminate. So I'm thinking we grab Ysera here. I know it's going to take a while, but Paladin decks do tend to be a little bit tougher. They're a bit harder to take down directly. So I'm thinking Ysera because I'm, I'm just intrigued as to see what he she can actually do. All right. I kind of like redemption sometimes, especially if, like, you've got something like Ysera up on the field. It's like, yeah, I can bring him back to life. That's great. Admittedly, it can trigger at the wrong time, resurrect the wrong thing, and it also doesn't trigger battle cries. So it's not that amazing, but it can definitely give you an edge. Dark Iron Dwarf, like, I would take almost every time because it's just a rock-solid card. Really, really good. 4-4 and a plus 2 permanent attack, but yeah, I mean, you're not even going to argue with that. The Snapjaw we generally avoid, unless we have means to manipulate what it can do, and we don't, so we can probably safely ignore that. Loot Hoarder is a solid card in my opinion, and Silverhand Knight is pretty good as well. Hard to complain about either of those things, they're both pretty good. I'm going to take a Loot Hoarder just to start on my card draw. Speaking of card draw, Blessing of Wisdom is available. Argent Protector, fantastic. I love the Divine Shields. Blood Sail Raider, not so great necessarily with a Paladin deck. They do have some weapons available to them, but they're often very limited in terms of their attack value, so it's not necessarily great. you got like two weapons, and I think you can get a third via Legendary. Blessing of Wisdom, Argent Protector. Which one to go with? Let's, let's start building that card draw. I'll probably get Argent Protectors later on. Ah. There is one of the weapons I was talking about, the Sword of Justice. There's also, of course, Avenging Wrath, which is hilarious, and then Blood Knight. Blood Knight is actually kind of fantastic if you just want a card that can just power itself up very quickly off a Paladin deck, it's ideal. Sword of Justice is pretty good as well, though. I like the buffs that these give. This is a little too situational for my liking, because I don't know how many Divine Shields I'm going to have access to in this deck. If I was constructing a deck, I'd probably be taking two Blood Knights, but since I'm not... A Sword of Justice is probably a better bet. This is okay. Obviously, it's a little bit RNG. It is kind of board clear, but of course, it could hit entirely the wrong thing. So, I'm going to take a Sword of Justice. All right, Aldo Peacekeeper, Alarmabot, Twilight Drake. Okay, we, we will take an Alarmabot on the basis that we can, you know, there are some combos you can play with that. I do like my Alarma bots. They're a little bit gimmicky, I've got to say. Keeping them alive is difficult. Not as difficult with the Paladin deck, so you can Divine Shield them. And it's also a bit random number generator. You can toss that out and draw the wrong thing, but it's still pretty good. Holy Wrath, I hate because it's far too RNG. That can, it's a five-cost card that can be completely useless. It's really bad. Double a Minion's Attack, Blessed Champion. That's pretty solid. And then Aldor Peacekeeper from Control. I love that. 3-3 three, three and change a Minion's Attack to 1 is a phenomenally good card. I'm going to take that. Blessing of Might, Spellbreaker, Light's Justice. So this is a weapon I was talking about earlier. It's actually one of the longest endurance weapons in the game, but it only does like one damage a swing. It can be really good, especially when combined with something that actually benefits that kind of thing. 
I'm thinking of like Captain Greenskin or something like that. Blessing of Might, Spellbreaker. Both of these are really good. I don't have any Silence in my deck yet, so I'm going to take a Spellbreaker. We'll probably get Blessings of Might later. Chance for a second Blessing of Wisdom if I like, but we also have a Stormwind Knight and Armani Berserker. This is, I mean, all of these are really good, honestly. Armani Berserker, generally, I'd take it on a deck where I can reliably hit this for one damage, but since I can't necessarily do that, I'm, I think it's like a combo with that. I mean, both of these are pretty good. I love the 2-5 charge on the Stormwind Knight. That's great. I already have one Blessing of Wisdom. It would be kind of nice to get a second one. If I get up to four, I can get major crazy card draw on this deck. So, it seems to be the kind of place that we're going for. Equality. Comedy card. Incredibly powerful in the right situation. Which is why I think we're going to take it. Doubles of Minions attack is nice, don't get me wrong, but... Stuff like Blessing of Kings, I kind of like better because it's like, it's plus four, plus four. So in what situation is doubling that attack going to give you more benefit than that? Some, certainly, but not all. Mad Bomber, some people swear by this. Some people hate it. I hate it <laughs> because it's just a little bit too RNG. You can blow up your own stuff with it. You can end up accidentally triggering Enrages on the other side. Of course, you can also do it on your own, but again, it's not that reliable. So I don't like taking Mad Bomber. I know a lot of people do, and that's totally understandable. That's not my kind of play style. I'm thinking just we take a Blessing of Kings here. Guardian of Kings is okay, but for 7 cost, it's like it's a heal and a 5-6 creature. I prefer that. Repentance. This is nice. Very nice. One cost. I mean, it can completely ruin a creature incredibly fast. you got to play it at the right time, of course. But it's still pretty good. That's another Blessing of Might, though, that we're talking about there. So let's grab one of those. Dread Corsair. I have one weapon. It's not really going to help because it's not a big weapon. Wind Fury Harpy. Love this card. Very effective. Also like this one. Currently, we're looking low on the six costers. So we're going to grab the Wind Fury Harpy. Humility. Absolutely phenomenal card. And then hand it both of these are good. <laughs> both of these are really good. We don't have much on the Divine Shield side of things yet, so as a result, I'm going to grab that. Another Guardian of Kings available. We don't have much on the Taunt side, so let's grab a Fen Creeper. Always rock solid. Second card draw availability would be cool. I guess like four card draw cards. Hopefully we get something else later. What else have we got? Hmm, Mad Bomber, Frostwolf, Grunt, Wolf Rider. Aggressive creature, defensive creature. We're not so good on the taunt side of things, so let's fix that. Noble Sacrifice can be amazing. It can also be a complete waste of time, but I like it more than Eye for an Eye, honestly. I really do, because that can save you from a nasty trade. Harvest Golem is a solid creature. Very good, especially if you happen to have any kind of area buffs, say, uh, Direwolf Alpha or Stormwind Champion or something along those lines. Since we don't have any of those things yet, I think we're going to take a Noble Sacrifice. Holy Light, straight up heal, not too bad. But I do like my Scarlet Crusader. I mean, it's a 3-1 with Divine Shield. That means you can essentially trade it for a far more powerful creature and not actually lose it. I love it. It's really good. Crazed Alchemist, Pint Size Summoner Demolisher. Like, in this situation, I would almost always grab a Pint Size Summoner just because it lets you make bigger plays earlier in the game. And that could put you in a really powerful position. Demolishers are really solid as well, especially if you get them out nice and early. Which is why I'm actually thinking of taking it. And Crazed Alchemist can be amazing. It just depends in what kind of scenario. I mean, you can use this to do all sorts of great stuff. But it is a little bit situational. I think we take the Demolisher. On the basis that in this deck so far, there is nothing in terms of board clearing. And Demolisher trades very effectively, especially early on in the game. Even later on, if you can put it behind a Taunt Ward, it starts popping creatures. Alright, neither of these are going to be useful because I don't have any of that, which is fine because I wanted a Stampede and Kodo anyway. This is great for getting rid of big taunt creatures. Something like the, I think it's the Mogashar Warden. You can get rid of him. You can also get rid of stuff like the Silverback Primate Monkey thingy. You know what I'm talking about. It's good for knocking down those big walls. Another Blessing of Kings. This, not so keen on, because I don't really have many weapons, so Spiteful Smith could be good if you had a lot of weapons. It's actually fantastic if you've got a lot of uh, those Light's Hope weapons, the little hammers, but another Silence might be good. This would only be like the second one we have in the deck, so I think we'll grab that. All right, spells, spells, spells. Two Secrets and a Hand of Protection. I Usually, I like Secrets. I do, but I prefer Reliable Abilities. 
because that stuff can be popped, especially Paladin stuff can end up being popped on something useless. So that's not so great. Eye for an Eye is not really a card that I like. I mean, it's don't get me wrong, it's extremely cost efficient in certain circumstances. Vegco Mercenary. Some people swear by this, some people don't. If you're in a, a very kind of heavy deck in terms of your creatures, you might not want to get it because it's got a fairly hefty disadvantage. Admittedly, you can get it out very early. A Wisp. It's a freebie. Senjin Shieldmaster. Direwolf Alpha. Okay. I think we grab the Alpha in this scenario. It's very powerful. Ah, another weapon. True Silver Champion. Fairy Dragon. I like Fairy Dragon a lot. Another weapon would be pretty good for trading. This is like one of the best trading weapons because you can take out heavy creatures and only take like two damage from them. So that's pretty good. Thinking about that. We don't have a lot in terms of like elimination for them either. So let's take one of those. Okay, our curve is not terrible. Raid leaders, always good. Heavier taunt creatures. We do have one Fen Creeper. A second one would probably be good. What would be nice is if it let me break down how many taunt creatures I had without just scrolling through. Because that's like one, two, only two taunt creatures. Yeah, that's not so good. Let's get another one. Another taunt available here. Noble, noble Sacrifice. Possibility. Priestess of a Loon. Not, not bad. I'm not massively keen on creatures that do heals to your hero. Because if you've played well and you've actually kept them off, then you end up throwing them down and a lot of like that mana cost is because of this and you don't necessarily get the benefit from it. So it's not so ideal. Be nicer if maybe you'd have the option to heal another creature with it. That would be cool. It's like in that circumstance, I'd probably just be playing the Witch Doctors. I think another taunt gives the second lower cost taunt creature. That leaves us with two available here. Cost to charge creature, cost for Chillwind Yeti. I, I mean, a cost for two charge is pretty solid, honestly. I like the Bluegill Warrior. I think it's a solid pick. And that leaves us with one more. So that's that RNG card. Don't really like that. Mana Addict can be good. I don't have that many spells, funnily enough. It may be a flesh-eating ghoul time. It's especially true with a Paladin deck because you can throw a lot of kind of sacrificial initiates to actually buff this ghoul, ghoul up, so that's pretty good. Spells-wise, I mean, I've, I have some, don't get me wrong. I have a, a reasonable number, but I'm thinking the Flesh Eating Ghoul's a better play here. So there we go. Mm, not a terrible curve. We'll see how it goes. I'm, if I thought back on it, I would probably wouldn't have taken that Alarmo bot, but that the thing is I didn't have a lot of big creatures that can really make use of those early plays. Which is, of course, kind of my fault, but it's also kind of the draft's fault. You know, we get the legendary out very early, and then we don't get anything that costs six or more, really. Alright, Hunter deck. Okay. Hunters are, of course, a pain in the ass because they can consistently damage you, and their hero power completely ignores any kind of protection that you've got, so you can be eventually whittled down in these kind of scenarios. I've lost to Hunters quite a lot. True Silver Champion, I uh, don't think we need to take that yet. I'm going to keep the... No, I want to get rid of one of them. Because I don't have a creature available yet, so I'm thinking... Get rid of the Blessing of Might for the time being. Alright. That's alright. It's not not amazing, but it's alright. Gives that buff to the Scarlet Crusader, which is a possibility. Secret Keeper coming out straight away. Alright. I'm intrigued. I mean, Secret Keeper is not necessarily a great pick in draft, because you don't know how many secrets you're going to get access to. But admittedly, playing against me, it's pretty handy, because of course I'm a secret user, and there's only three out of the nine classes that are. Okay, Hand of Protection available. I could just go straight out for a Direwolf Alpha. I could burn that, but I wouldn't be able to play anything next turn, so it makes little sense. So we're just going to keep the coin for later. Coin would let me get out a turn two Scarlet Crusader, which is definitely not a terrible thing. Which I could then also trade for the Secret Keeper. And I'd keep her alive as well because of the Divine Shield, which is not too shabby. Let's see. Alright, steady shot so he doesn't have anything in his hand. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, Fen Creeper. So what do we do? Well, we could put the Direwolf Alpha down, but if we... Well, I mean... Depends. Could buff up the Secret Keeper if he plays a Secret, which is a possibility. Admittedly, if he had that, he'd probably have played it already, considering that he had two mana. I'm thinking we just burn it and go straight into the Scarlet Crusader at this stage. She's 
pretty much guaranteed to survive the first turn. And then he could put down the Direwolf Alpha and hit for four, which is not bad. I also have two hands of protection, so if I want to keep her alive, I can do that quite easily. And I, that early three damage and four damage with the Direwolf Alpha can be really good. All right, that's pretty annoying and unexpected. Okay, that was a nice play, actually, really nice play. That has essentially nullified her usefulness at this stage. Not the worst thing ever, but pretty irritating, because now I can't actually effectively trade her for either. So I'm thinking, actually, yes, I can. What am I talking about? I've got Direwolf Alpha. Of course I can trade her. In fact, I could even put the Divine Shield back up if I liked. Which do we get rid of? Secret Keeper is more of a risk at this stage. I know Crazed Alchemist has 2-2, two -two, but... Mm, actually, yeah, Crazed Alchemist has 2-2, two -two, which means that he could kill the Direwolf Alpha next turn, so I could get rid of that. Whereas, we don't know whether or not she actually has a secret to do anything with yet. So, let's use that HP buff against him. Because the Secret Keeper certainly cannot kill even if a secret is played. So, Animal Companion comes out. Misha. Always good to have, especially early game. Probably the... I don't know, I mean, I like Huffer a lot, who is the charging boar as well. But, Misha is a pain in the ass to deal with. I do, however, have two spell breakers, So, I think we're going to be burning one of them to get Misha out of the way. There we go. So that taunt is now not a factor. That is still a 4-4 four, four bear. So that is definitely a concern. And since I don't have enough for my hand of protection, I could like go for a double trade, but it's hor horrendously inefficient. I'm thinking we get rid of the secret keeper and then just go for a direct attack. That Misha can only kill one thing next turn. We'll probably go after that. Hmm. That's why, like, I'm almost thinking that it's actually worth throwing my two creatures at him. Just to get rid of that Misha. In which case, I shouldn't have even burned the silence, but whatever. Okay. Misha will probably go straight for the Direwolf Alpha, I'd imagine. But he could, I mean, he could just trade the Misha for the Spellbreaker, which is actually fine. Because that Spellbreaker is going to hit for five next turn, so. Oh, wow, he gave him Taunt back. Wow, that's a dick move. Okay. <laughs> Alright, he's ignoring all of that, and he can, because he's just giving him taunt back. Thankfully, I have the ability to dick move him again. I have a second spellbreaker. Not only that, but I also have a hand of protection, which means that I could do an effective trade, which would actually kill it. So... Yes, what do we do? Okay. Second spellbreaker. There we go. And then what we do is we Divine Shield the existing Spellbreaker, which then allows me to kill the Misha. Which is probably the best thing I do. I could then trade these two for that. It would still it would still leave me with good control. Like, I lose two creatures, but I still have two Spellbreakers on the field, so I think that's actually reasonable. Because otherwise, next turn he turns around and kills a Spellbreaker with that guy, so... That's just the nature of the beast. It's like, it leaves me with two 4-3 creatures on the field. That's my logic. Even though I'm trading two creatures for one there. That's still like a 4-cost hound master that went down to 4 costs worth of creatures. Alright, this is where the snowballing nonsense begins. So, questing adventurer is there. Annoyingly enough, spellbreakers only have 3 HP, which means a questing adventurer can be a nightmare. Have your Sarah for later. That's good. Assuming I can survive that long. Probably the best play here is to put down a taunt creature, because that questing adventurer will not be able to kill it. So that means I can kind of continue to do direct damage. I can cancel out that Dragon Hawk immediately. Admittedly, that does mean sinking 4 damage into a 1 damage creature for 1 cost, which I don't necessarily like. Alternatively, we play the Wind Fury Harpy, but that does leave us without any kind of protection. So I'm thinking we taunt. Now, do we cancel out the Dragon Hawk? Well, there's no way that Questing Adventure is going to be able to overwhelm that Fen Creeper. Not at this stage. And then we can just trade if we need to. Now, let's let's get rid of that. I just, I don't want him being able to play something really nasty that would ab give it the ability to do way more damage than I expected. So, let's just not let him do that. Let's keep the creature advantage. I have equal cards to him. I have an endgame option in the form of Ysera, so things are going alright. 
That questing adventurer is a concern. That's a core hound. That's gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass. The questing adventurer can't break through though. So that's the most important thing. Can we kill the core hound? Well, this is why I really don't like core hounds because they're actually kind of easy to kill. They only have five, as you can see, only five health, which means that you can easily buff something up and just murder it. So we could trade. Just to get rid of the core hound, we could try and delay the core hound with a noble sacrifice. Admittedly, it depends on what he decides to do. Mm. We could just let, let that go. Mm, it's a tough call. I do, of course, have hand of protection. I will trade at least one creature for this if I do that. I'm thinking we just hand of protection, trade out for the core hound, and then just kind of let it go from there. And that lets us play the Wind Fury Harpy after that as well. So, yeah, let's do it that way. Seems like the best way of doing things. Okay. I don't like getting rid of a creature so powerful, but it's better than letting the core hound sit around, especially since that's a beast, which might allow him to trigger a kill command or something like that. And I think we just play the Wind Fury Harpy now. And... And kind of do damage. I'm not so keen on the fact that I'm le leaving the questing adventurer alone here. I think that may be making a mistake. I should have probably just hit it. It's going to play... Oh, now he's made it a taunt creature. Yep, I should have hit it. I, I'm a moron for not doing that. Deadly shot goes off, which kills my taunt. And he's probably then going to trade it for the Wind Fury Harpy if he has any common sense. Yep. I'm a jackass. So I'm now going to have to trade this for that. And that was suboptimal in every possible respect. So that wasn't very good, was it? No. No, it wasn't. Oh, uh, hell. All right. We could play Ysera for free. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to trade that. We're going to... Noble Sacrifice. Alarma Bot. Loot Hoarder. And that, which kind of burns my hand out. This will give me a free Ysera next turn, assuming they can't kill the Alarma bot. If not, I can play Ysera next turn anyway, but I prefer to do it for zero mana and maybe play whatever the next card that comes in my hand is. So, that kind of works. Nope. But he does still have nine mana, so he'll probably be able to kill it anyway. So, that pulls out the 2-1. He goes straight for my Alarma bot. That doesn't happen. So, what's he got for that nine mana that could get rid of the Alarma bot, if anything? Tundra Rhino, he can charge. And he's got a secret, so he, he can't kill the Alarma Bot, so I'm getting that Ysera in free. Admittedly, I might get my Ysera sniped, but it has 12 health, so I'm not too worried. Sweet, free Ysera. Very cool. Thank you. Alright, and I get a Wisp and another Alarma Bot. How wonderful! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna play the Alarma Bot first, because that could be a snipe. Let's find out if it's a snipe. It's not a snipe, okay. So, there's a couple of other things, of course, it could be. Obviously, this we're going to trade out. I think we'll trade immediately with the Loot Hoarder, because I'd like some more card draw. I still have the mana. Hey, give me that. that was a freezing trap or a snake trap? It's a freezing trap. Okay. It's actually fine. No big deal. We can make the trade anyway, and we'll just trade it with this instead. Okay, so that means we get the Wisp back into play, we get this, and now Ysera starts being a pain in the ass. I can actually play the Loot Hoarder again. <laughs> it's just funny as hell. There we go. Cool. Alright, so my hand is empty and I'm kind of relying on Ysera now. And oh my god! Wow! This is where I get murdered, isn't it? Core Hound, which has charge. I'm actually dead. Oh. That sucks. That really sucks. I just had the momentum back, and since I didn't have any taunt, that was it. Uh, two core hounds, one after another. Couldn't have seen that one coming. Well, that sucked. It was a decent start for the deck as well, but I just got blindsided. Well, never mind. Let's try again. At least I know what Ysera does now. I want more Ysera. Hoping for, like, a bigger Alarma Bot player earlier on in the game. That would be cool. Oh, I have Ysera there. As much as, like, I don't want to get rid of Ysera, I should. I mean, but it's not fun, is it? No, it's not fun. Oh, It 
It's not fun. <laughs> All right, that's okay. I, just, I don't want to toss away your Sarah. I might never see her again. She's hilarious. This is a bad play, by the way, and you shouldn't play the way that I'm playing because it's terrible. <laughs> like, if you have a nine cost card like that, and it's like, hmm, maybe I'll pull the Alarma bot of the one in 30 cards that I have in my deck, you are doing it wrong. <laughs> Frostwolf Grunt. Do not do that. But if I survive long enough, it'll be nice that I actually have it. Admittedly, it didn't help me last turn. All right. Well, this is the dumb fight going on right here. What's annoying is I can't actually kill it. <laughs> Noble Sacrifice. I really don't want to burn that on something so weak. Blessing of Wisdom would get me card draw from this attack, which is not dreadful. Admittedly, she's definitely he's definitely going to die next turn, that we know for a fact. But hey, you know, it gets me a card. Which gets me a loot hoarder. Which gets me more card draw. Okay. Well, I think I'll play that loot hoarder. There we go. So, at least that's another card I can get. Elven Archer could trade with that, but it does mean he ends up losing his... Yep, he's going to do that. That makes sense. So that keeps my loot hoarder alive, which is cool. That means my loot hoarder is going to get a free kill on the shield bearer, and is still going to be active for next turn. Which leaves us with a Scarlet, straight up a Scarlet Crusader. I mean, there's nothing complicated about that play. Not at all. So, there we go. Gets one of, the, one of those. Noble Sacrifice is not required this turn. Again, I, I like keeping this for big hitters for obvious reasons. This is hilarious if they play a Magma Rager, which I've come to the conclusion is not very good because it's too easy to pick off. But if you can buff it... Oh, great. Here we go. <laughs> Healing Totem Central. Coin burned. What's he got? Three cost creature of some sort. Feral Spirit. Oh, yeah. That's a pain in the ass. Thankfully, I can kill at least one of them with my Scarlet Crusader. And, in fact, I could actually hand a protection to do it again. Alternatively, I have a Stampeding Kodo. The problem with Stampeding Kodo at this situation is that it might end up killing off one of the totems, which is not what I'm looking to do. So, I'm thinking... Yeah, we go for... And we just put the hand of we actually just put the hand of protection back on for next turn. So that kills one. There we go. Another put the hand of protection back on. I could kill off my own guy here, because I mean I do have mana, I just can't really kinda use it right now. So let's get some card draw out of it, which actually gets me a blue girl warrior, which I can then play and use to kill the spirit wolf. Admittedly, I'll lose my Blue Girl Warrior, but it gets rid of his freaking Spirit Wolf, and next turn he's overloaded, so he's not going to be able to play much. It also actually gives me a Reinforce. So there we go. Okay. So that leaves me with my Scarlet Crusader kind of intact. I did burn a lot of cards to do that, but he only has three mana this turn because of that overload. So that wasn't too bad. What's he about to do to me? Is that a Hex? I'm not sure what that is. Injured Blade Master. All right. It's a kind of a weird card, but it's nicely comboed with a heal. Ah, Demolisher. But also a Wind Fury Harpy. Stampeding Kodo is still not an option for us. It's probably going to be Wind Fury Harpy. And then we just trade out here to get rid of the Blade Master, and then Wind Fury starts to have fun. Alternatively, we throw down the Demolisher. Which is not the worst idea ever, considering it's going to start knocking out totems or whatever gets summoned. So... Hmm. Both are not bad. This is a high cost creature. I think he had some kind of hex in his hand. That's what worries me because he was going to play something on the Scarlet Crusader, but I don't know. I'm going to play the Demolisher. And we are going to, of course, just kill this off. So we'll take the swing here. There we go. Trade out a free creature, which leaves us with the Demolisher there. So... There's a couple of threats sitting on the board for him that he has to deal with. Either he gets rid of this 3-1 creature or he tries to get rid of my Demolisher so that it stops knocking his totems over. Which is... That's going to be nice. That's going to kill like a totem every turn. What I need is Taunt at this stage. I lost last time because I didn't have enough of it. And I wasn't able to stop that big rush coming in. 
Stampeding Kodo is still useless. Well, it's not useless, it's just killing a totem as its battle cry is not ideal. Alright, Taunt Creature. Okay. Alright, so it seems like it doesn't have that many options if you play that, because that's a weird combo of stuff to play. Alright, that kills off his healing totem. Great. Fantastic. So we could probably just like trade out the Crusader at this stage, but I do have a Blessing of Kings, so I don't even have to necessarily do that. Mm. I'm thinking we play out the Wind Fury Harpy, maybe put down the Noble Sacrifice to make sure that it doesn't get picked off by something next turn, and we trade this for this, which still leaves us in a good spot. There we go. So I could now trade the... Yeah, I mean, I can just kill that with the Demolisher. And I can just kind of work on that totem. I mean, one way that... I don't know, that was kind of stupid. I actually should have... Eh, maybe not. Ah, Hex. <laughs> I knew he had a Hex. I knew it. It was somewhere in the back of my mind saying he's got a Hex and I shouldn't play some stuff, but hey. Well, such is the way of things. That's annoying. Ysera comes out next turn. Stampeding Kodo is an option, but it's like I get rid of a Stone Claw totem with that. It's not great, is it? But the thing is, there's no other way kind of through that Stone Claw. So I'm thinking we just do that and hope that it kills that, which it does. Excellent. That means that we can kill off that. We can start to take some kind of mild swings. Hand of Protection is available. I'm probably going to use that on Ysera. So I might want to just keep that in my hand. I don't really see a need to use it yet. I'm going to have plenty of mana, so... All right. Kill off that totem. So I've got creatures, but they're kind of rubbish. <laughs> so until I get Ysera on the board, at least I know he's burned one hex. I wonder how many more hexes he has. If he had lots more hexes, he would have probably been a little bit more willing just to hex my Scarlet Crusader, but that's hard to say. It's an arena deck. It could have any number of hexes in it, potentially. So that's a pain in the ass. Ah, oh, that triggered the Gurubashi Berserker. This is why Demolishers suck in this situation. All right, so that guy's now 5-5, which is a nightmare. We're probably going to have to do a Blessing of Kings trade this turn just to get rid of him. Otherwise, he's going to start doing monstrous things to us. However, we do have a frog. I know, that's weird, isn't it? We've got a frog, which means that it's going to take that hit unless he's able to remove it directly. If he had removal, he'd have probably used it by now. So I'm thinking Ysera is the play, actually. Yeah, I think so. I think Ysera is the play. There we go. So things are going to start to get really interesting. All right. So we can kill Gurubashi Berserker, but it's going to take a long time. A very long time. What we do kind of need to do is get rid of that healing totem. That has got to happen. So get rid of that because it's going to start healing up the Gurubashi Berserker and things can rapidly snowball out of control. Bear in mind, we do also have a Noble Sacrifice. Laughing Sister comes in from Ysera. That's not... It's not terrible. That's a 3-5 for 3 that can't be targeted. It's a Fairy Dragon on steroids. Oh, if you want to buff that, that's actually kind of fine because my Noble Sacrifice is going to eat the first swing. The second swing, of course, is going to hit the frog, but this was exactly what I hoped would happen, just being able to hold them off for a turn, and then that leaves me like a Blessing of Kings that I could use just to do it trade what oh yes that was the noble sacrifice i'm like what what did he hit oh son of a bitch <laughs> oh this is starting to get bad thankfully i can still trade i can actually just like blessing of kings one of these and just kill it off immediately so that's fine this is why i held on to this blessing of kings there is no there's no good trade that i can make using a divine shield that would work I'm just going to have to, yeah, I'm just going to have to do that because I don't have anything I could do five damage, so. Such is the way of things. I do have a taunt, which is ideal. So we do Blessing of Kings and most likely we then taunt. So we're going to Blessing of Kings on you. You're going to get the biggest buff you have ever had in your life. And then you're going to suicidally charge at that. Thank you very much. So that gets rid of you. Thank you very much. And that leaves us with a taunt. Which is exactly what I'm going to put in play. So these guys are going to be going at each other for a while. That Wind Fury is also gone, which is super important because Wind Speaks are not like great without it. And then we've got a Hand of Protection, which we could put on the Fen Creeper. Which would mean that it's going to... Because they can... He has enough potential to kill that Fen Creeper in one turn. So I want to make sure he can't do that. Divine Shield's going to prevent it. 
Uh, and the alternative, I just beat down his Fen Creeper, which I can actually do, can I, safely? I kinda can. I can't get rid of it. I could just like go for a straight hit with, Ysera's got a lot of health. Ysera's probably fine. And then we just go for that, which gets rid of that, cool. All right, that works. I think we have control of this game for the most part, but shamans can be tricky. Something to bear in mind. Oh, silence coming down. Right. Well, she's still tough, but now she won't be able to call in more of these creatures, which is kind of annoying because those creatures are really good. That picks off the Demolisher finally that's been doing amazing work up to this point. We now, of course, have a Blessing of Wisdom, so a little bit more card draw. We've still got two Laughing Sisters out of this. That I mean, they're 3-5 untargetable, which is pretty good. Certainly not done yet, but we're getting there. All right. What do we play? More to the point, what is the blessing? I'll probably put a Blessing of Wisdom on a Laughing Sister. Because they're going to be... Eh, they can still kind of target them. I still have a Fang Creeper, actually, so no, they can't. And we can just kind of... We can start by trading here. So that, put that out there. Oh, I can't target it, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. Never mind. I think we'll probably just put it on Ysera. She's harder to kill. Yeah, there we go. Play another Laughing Sister. Just, like, play my entire hand at this stage. So I've got a bunch of stuff on the field. We can trade, and we should. This is just going to batter into that. Let's just... There we go. There's another big hit coming in. Fen Creeper is also available to attack. I've still got that wall up in front of him, so... Gonna keep that wisp in my hand just to so he doesn't know what I've got. I wanted to at least have a little bit of uncertainty. Feral Spirit comes out. He's starting to burn out of stuff, admittedly so am I. That's a lot of taunt he just brought onto the field. And a Frostwolf Warlord, which is a... That's a really problematic. I have more taunt. Great. And I can even do a nice card draw. Tr no, I can't. I keep forgetting I can't do that. I was going to say, I can do a card draw trade. No. But my, my Laughing Sisters will be able to take them out pretty easily. So, we can do that. It's like, one. Two. We can then use the Fen... One way or the other, that's going to die, isn't it? Oh, do I have a way of get? Yeah. Yeah, I do have a way of getting rid of this without having my Ysera or my Fen Creeper dying. You trade that for that. You then trade this for this, which gives me card draw. Which gives me a Direwolf Alpha, which I can then play for additional damage. Which I'm going to pop down right about here. I then play an additional Taunt creature. Which I then follow up by punching him in the face. Which gets me more card draw. It's delicious! There you go, you're gonna have a wisp. I actually can't play any more creatures. I'm, I'm full of creatures right now. All right, he's in a bit of trouble. A lightning storm right now would actually kill most of my side. I'm hoping he doesn't have that. <laughs> I'm really hoping. No, oh, he gives up. There we go. Sweet. I was gonna kill him next turn unless he had a way to deal with that. So that played out rather well. Surprisingly so. I don't think I necessarily deserve that one, but we'll take what we can get. All right, let's play one more. And then I'll probably wrap this session. Seems reasonable to me. Paladin games do have a tendency of taking a little bit longer. Alright, a druid. Butter spread, or bread spread, there we go. Alright, go on second, extra card. Hmm. I never like tossing my silences away, so I'm going to keep one of those and I'll just... That was not helpful. <laughs> Oh well, I have two blessings of wisdom, so at least I can get cards pretty quickly. <laughs> no, that was not what I was after. All right, well this limits me very much early on, but hey, Direwolf Alpha has his first creature. Okay, what does that leave me with the ability to do? Not an awful lot. Probably just like summon a. One of those. There's no point in really playing anything else at this point. Burning my coin isn't going to get me anything, so. 
keep a hold of my coin and then I can use it for like a big silencer play or get my true silver champion out earlier or a blessing of kings play. Something like that. All right, so he's already kind of starting to rush me down. He's doing so very effectively. This is something I've got to deal with. I do have that taunt available, which will shut that down fairly effectively. Nice thing about this is I can just trade that for that, which is kind of wonderful. I could also pop a Blessing of Wisdom on him, which will be okay. It wouldn't be the worst idea I've ever had. Because that will get... I mean, I've got another Blessing of Wisdom, so... You know, it's a one-cost card draw. I know this guy's going to attack. I also know he's going to die. So, that gets us a Demolisher, which is fantastic. I can even play it, which is even more fantastic. There we go. And I goddamn love the Demolisher early game. Especially since I know that within two turns I'll be able to get my Taunt out. The problem is I could have had my Taunt next turn if I had saved the coin. I decided not to do that because I think getting the Demolisher out at this stage is great. Pretty much anything he plays right now is going to take... I mean, this could die, but bear in mind this affects characters, not minions. So it could hit Malfurion or it could hit him. So we'll see. This is a problem. That needs to be dealt with immediately. That's a Wind Fury. Great. That was exactly what I wanted it to hit. I'm pretty happy with how that went. Stampeding Kodo cannot be played. Typical. So what we could do, we could Blessing of Kings on the Demolisher, which would make it a nightmare to deal with. He Druids have fairly limited removal. They do have some. But it would be kind of hilarious. Alternatively, I just Blessing of Might on it and hit him with that. Or we can silence it. But even then, it's still like a 2-3. I think we're just Blessing of Might and hit it with the Demolisher at this point. It just seems like the most mana-efficient mana way of trading it. That's still got 2 HP left. I should have put a Blessing of Wisdom on it as well, because that would have got me card draw. But I guess I can save it till later. That's not the worst thing ever. I still have, you know, a hand of 6, so it's not the worst thing. I don't like playing Blessing of Wisdom on the turn after, turn before, even if, because it makes the minion a prime target. Stranglethorn Tiger, which can actually be hit by a Demolisher. It can be done, I believe, because that is not a target. That's random. Unfortunately, it didn't hit it. Not that we'd ha have had a means to get rid of it anyway. What we can do is... Si no, we can't silence it, because target you can't target with a silence, so that's not going to work. What we can do is Fen Creeper, which will take that hit. So I'm thinking that's probably the best play right now. Stampeding Kodo will not affect it, so there's no reason to do that. Overly buffing my Demolisher just makes it a target for something, so I'm thinking we just play the Fen Creeper. It's like, hey, alright, if you're going to play a 5 creature, it's going to run right into that, and then we're just going to kill it off next turn. So, engage the Beating Stick. Excellent. So I put this on a more even footing. I have slight card advantage. I've got pretty clear minion advantage, and I am catching up to him in health. So things are okay for the moment. We'll see what he's got. Druids have a number of annoying things, like swipe, for instance. Very, very damaging. Nasty kind of board clear. They also have a lot of choices, as you can see. You can often pick an either-or scenario in a lot of these. That means this tiger is going to be a gigantic pain in the ass. No, no, it isn't, because the demolisher is going to kill it. This is very clearly making it abundantly obvious that my play was correct. What we can do is, of course, silence that which is going to shut down its taunting ability, but it's still a 4-6 that's going to be being a pain in the ass. My Fen Creeper will die next turn to it, pretty much guaranteed. He might even use something else. Two options, options, options. What do we have? We could get the True Silver Champion out and start a swinging, which means we would be able to kill off that. We'd lose the Fen Creeper, but we're going to lose the Fen Creeper anyway. There's no way to directly kill it unless we play Blessing of Kings. Do I want a Blessing of Kings? Let me think. I kind of do. I really kind of do. Because that means that we can kill that off safely. We can still get a couple of hits in and we can then play Bluegill Warrior. To stack up a bunch of damage this turn. There we go. So the Fen Creeper is still there. And that's kind of... Yeah, it's only got 1 HP. That's fine. But it's a taunt. It's supposed to stop them from hitting me. Force of Nature comes down with charge, so... That's a pretty good way of getting rid of it. So the Fen Creeper is going to go down. He's then going to use that to kill the Demolisher. Okay, so he burnt a pretty powerful ability to clear my side of the board. Which is a fair play. That's reasonable. But 
I do have other options, so that's fine. Flesh-eating ghoul and another reinforce would be pretty good. We could start kind of stacking it up on that. We can throw down a Blessing of Wisdom because on this because we know it's going to attack. It's a possibility. Admittedly, he can then just trade it with Shapeshift, so it's probably not a good idea. I don't really want to burn it so easily just for one card. I still have a decent number of cards in my hand. I don't necessarily need that. All right. So, kind of a slow burn as we go. I'm doing all right. We definitely lost, so that's what, we lost like one Torn Creature. I don't have that many more in my deck, so that's a bit concerning. I don't have any in my hand either. I do have a Spellbreaker, so it's good that I managed to hold on to that. So if he plays anything big, anything crazy like an Ancient of War, then I'll be able to take that out with that. All right. Starfall to take out that. You know, it's not the worst idea ever. He knows that things can snowball very rapidly. Now he's going to trade with one of these guys, I think. If he's got any sense. There we go. Which is... It's kind of the annoying thing about druids is that against this deck, they just kind of pick them off one at a time and take no damage. Wind Fury Harpy is available and a Hand of Protection, though. Mm. Also, I can combo that with Blessing of Wisdom, which is hilarious because that means you get the double card draw out of it. His priority is most likely going to be to kill this off immediately. He hasn't demonstrated any ability to do that with like a destroy card or anything, so I think we're going to toss down that Hand of Protection to see if we can stop him from doing that. So if he has a damage ability like a Starfire, that's just going to bounce off harmlessly. If he has two Starfires, well, tough, because they're five each and he's only got nine mana. Alternatively, he can just very, very easy. Oh, he's got something. Oh! <laughs> An Iron Beef. Best card in the game, seriously. Like, it is. It is so good. A 2-1 creature with a Silence is incredibly good and you should use it. Speaking of Silence, there's that Ancient of War I was talking about. That we can break, which is good. Okay, alright, so we have... I mean, I can still play this, but it's not going to be as effective. That double card draw I was hoping for is not going to happen. So first things first, we screw over that horribly, which means that it takes it down to a 5-5, five, five, which is nowhere near as scary as it was previously. What we can then do is get out the true silver champion, kill that off, and then trade it with this, which leaves this available just to go smack him. Alternatively, we can go Dark Iron Dwarf, but that's still going to... You know, it's going to force one of my guys to die, which is not necessary. This is why we have weapons. This is what they're for. We're trading health for creatures. So this is what we do. Still have that Blessing of Wisdom. I should probably just play it. In fact, I probably should because this 4-5 is going to be difficult to pick off. So let's do that. Yeah, I think we just... Yeah, we just hit him. I guess it's a Noble Sacrifice. Nice. Okay, cool. So I have fairly clear board advantage. He has card advantage, but I have health advantage. Okay. Ah, knife juggles a 3-2, so that's not so good. Now he's going to start throwing knives. Nothing worse than that. Oh, and he's taunted everything as well. And another knife hits that. Yeah, he got lucky there. I was hoping the knife would hit me or that. But as it stands, he can trade the boar for this, which is an amazing trade. And a death rattle on it. So there's going to be treants all over the place. And since I don't have a Consecration, this is going to get very difficult very quickly. You can see how wonderful a combo that is because that also triggered the Knife Juggler again. Okay, so that kind of sucks. We can kill off something with a Stampeding Kodo now, though. So that's a plus. We can also take another swing with the Wind Fury Harpy, which is always great. Admittedly, when Fury Harpy will die, unless I put a Hand of Protection on it, in which case it will not. So, Stampede and Kodo, which kills off that. Cool. And gives us another Sodding Treant to deal with. Oh, God. <laughs> this needs to die immediately. This is getting really bad. Okay, we need to get rid of that. The only way we can do it safely is to use Hand of Protection here, which, you know, is fine. That gets us an Aldor Peacekeeper. This is a potentially good play because it means I can change, you know, they can't straight trade. Noble Sacrifice isn't bad either. Bear in mind, I still have a True Silver Champion. So, Justice. we'll take the swing, kill off one of them. We could then play an Aldor Peacekeeper and a Noble Sacrifice, which will probably keep this Wind Fury Harpy alive. Okay, so let's do that. Aldor Peacekeeper on this one. Noble Sacrifice. There we go. So my theory is... 
it really, yeah, it kind of depends which one he attacks with first. If he attacks with this one first, the noble's eyes ah, too smart for that. Yeah, I was hoping he wouldn't do that. I was hoping he would use this one first. The noble sacrifice will kill that, but I'm going to lose that card now. Which kind of sucks. I was hoping that wouldn't happen, but such is the way of things. Assuming he can attack with it. I wonder if he's thinking about buffing it with something. We do still have some reasonable health creatures. And I also have this Dark Iron Dwarf. Oh, uh, no, I don't have any way of getting rid of that, because I don't have a silence. So things are starting to get rough now. Getting through that is going to be very expensive. I can do it on one turn, but I'm going to have to get rid of two creatures to do it. Which sucks. So I could basically Dark Iron Dwarf and then, you know, use these to kill it off. Which is lousy. It's not what I want to do. Alternatively, I can wait and see for one turn. Because he's going to have to hit that. Probably. <laughs> this is when we discover that he doesn't have to hit that. I don't want to play Dark Iron Dwarf yet. I'll have enough mana next turn regardless. Unless I pull Ysera, so I'll be fine. So my hope is he doesn't have a way of clearing this out. So he has to take his Ironbark Protector as a swing. Ah, oh, he's got a second taunt. That's not ideal. But at least I know that he does have to take a swing with one of his... No, he doesn't. That's probably a Moonfire or something. What is that? It's a Moonfire. So he doesn't have to take a swing with that, which means he can go straight at me. And I assume he kind of wants to. Yeah, thought so. Okay, things are getting ugly. Should have done that trade before. I didn't want to. I just... I didn't want to accept that I had to, but I think I might be dead this turn anyway. Hmm. Well, I'll survive two turns. But having to trade this out is not nice. And I don't have any taunt of my own left anymore because he was able to burn his last thing to get rid of it. So, I think we will have to trade. Ah, oh, I hate the thought of it. But I have to. I really have to. I have to get rid of this. Because otherwise I'm dead next turn. And that's the biggest damage output he's got. I mean, I could kill this off in one turn, but that doesn't solve my problem, right? Because he's still there, and if he pulls anything that allows him to do one more damage, then I'm just straight up dead. Okay, alright, so it's, we're doing what we have to do. Which is, we buff that up. We kill that off. And I think at this point, I'm just going to charge right at him. Because unless I get the ability to get rid of him... I'm just going to start working on him. I've got to get him down. I can kill him next turn with my Dark Iron Dwarf, which will kind of reset the playing field. Depends what his last card is. We're now completely top decking. It's a Blood Knight, which is not remotely useful to him right now. So I need to kill this next turn, which I can do. Unfortunately, unless I get a card which lets me kill this as well, I'm in serious trouble. Ah, that was actually a mistake from him. Because he's just given me another turn to live. Ha! Ha ha! Oh my! Yes! This is cool. Alright. We can reset the board. This is super cool. We have to kill that first, obviously. There we go. I even actually have an advantage in that respect. The problem is I have four health. So I guess it really depends on what I pull now or what he pulls. He could pull a damage ability and just instantly kill me. What has he got? I must safeguard the Two damage. I am dead next turn unless I get something really good. I'm probably dead anyway. I'm down. Oh, he used that to kill that. I'm probably still dead. <laughs> And it's useless. GG. That was a fun game. That did not go well, but it was a fun game. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Alright, well we'll come back to this session, which could be very, very short, in the next video. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.